original uh, engine mounts were uh, placed like this, so uh, I had to take them away to um, make room for new ideas. And uh, this is based on me putting in a, a kind of a, a attachment here against the frame, and then uh, there will be a fork and uh, down with a tube uh, that will uh, will be welded on this uh, bushing here. And uh, this is, as I mentioned, rubberized inside, so uh, that gives the possibility of the engine jumping up and down, maybe one or two tenths of millimeters. That's a big uh, stress reliever for uh, the rest of the frame. You know, this GoPro Hero 6 that I'm using, it kind of distorts the picture. When you come to the outskirts of the view field, it bends everything like this. Whereas, if you're in the middle, it's, everything looks pretty much okay. And then you get to the other side, it bends again. What a camera! Junk! Go fast uh, parts are found almost everywhere. Uh, you don't need to go to a uh, special whatever racing store. Uh, you can uh, also buy sheet metal or a tubes. Oh, and uh, scale and something to uh, write on, make your ideas on, and uh, then you're good to go. Well, it is chrome molybden steel, but still. And then add uh, coffee. Oh my goodness. Oh, sorry, no can do. Now the engine is uh, in place and um, I put these bushings uh, on, on it like this and I have also cut away the, um, the old engine attachments and uh, welded in these uh, drums instead. So these are hollow but it will uh, support in both sides and it's a fit for an M10 bolt getting straight through. And then I will uh, position a, a fork like this. Oh, tricky with one hand. Like that. So, and then there will be a tube coming down from here down to here. Now I have uh, machined the upper part of um, the engine mount here, and the, the lower part, the bushing here, is already in place. There's supposed to be a tube connecting these two. I've uh, chose to uh, to make this uh, in a hinge, if you like, so that it will be possible to uh, to flick this engine mount a little bit to the front to ease the assembly and disassembly of the engine. Uh, I have used this specific uh, design before, um, but then I had problems with. This rod is uh, pushing uh, against it, up and down like this, in, um, uh, from the movement of the piston uh, in the engine. So, um, uh, I had problems with uh, this was cracking here. So, and I solved it the last time with putting uh, one of these uh, in reinforcements here. So this will uh, take up the load and prevent this part from uh, bending because that's what causes the fatigue cracking here in the corners. So I made uh, a piece like this and I've slotted uh, the tube like this so it will fit like so. Uh, so this will, uh, when it moves up and down, it will support or get support from the whole uh, the whole way here. So um, that uh, did the trick last time. So I hope it it works this time too. When calculating how large uh, the counterbalancer should be and how large or the how large the imbalance should be on the crank, uh, you can express that in gram millimeters if you like. Uh, kind of a torque. And uh, you can imagine that uh, if it's, um, in this case, you have uh, the center of gravity perhaps here somewhere and you times that the radius it's on, then you get uh, the mass, the grams, 
uh, and the millimeter. So gram millimeter is um, the preferred uh, way of calculating uh, in this uh, very um, uh, unsophisticated way. But still, uh, for this one, it was uh, 11,500 gram millimeters uh, desired imbalance. And the desired imbalance in the crank was a little bit less than uh, OEM. So 21,010 uh, gram millimeters according to our calculations. So uh, fortunately I had uh, machined um, a 20 millimeter hole straight through both cheeks. Um, they are hardened so that is nothing you do in your normal drill machine. And I played around with having this empty and having it filled with uh, uh, tungsten copper inserts, heavy metal inserts, and then drilled them out. So I've tried a couple of different um, balance ratios and none of them worked uh, without the counterbalancer. So now when I'm adding a counterbalancer again, uh, I need to, uh, to get back uh, some of the material. So I put some, uh, some material back and I saved an 8.3mm hole. And that is to get uh, 98 grams on this radius. So, and I'll just um, try to, uh, to find an equilibrium here somewhere. And it looks like, um, like it's there. So uh, now I have uh, 21,010 gram millimeters here and on the counterbalancer 11,500. All in theory. Let's see how it works in real life. The old engine mounts had to go because of uh, this thing coming onto here. So these one were scrapped and these ones were put in place instead. So these are positioned uh, here. And as you men I mentioned earlier, here is the polyurethane rubber, uh, which hopefully gives some cushion on the front end, uh, allows the engine to jump up and down a couple of tens of millimeters. Next up is to uh, position uh, the new uh, uh, counterbalancer. Actually, uh, it is uh, there is some play in between here, uh, which allows, uh, after a closer measurement, uh, somewhere between uh, uh, 0.8 to 1 millimeter on uh, each side, when the crank is positioned uh, in its tolerance as far as it can on that side, and equally this one is positioned on the other end, like this. Uh, there will be this tolerance, uh, as I mentioned, so, uh, some, somewhere in between um, 0 0.7 and 1.1 millimeter. But to make that happen, I needed to, to buy some shims. So I think uh, a one which is 0.3 millimeter on uh, this side of the counterbalancer will do the trick. So I'll just uh, put everything in place and see what the uh, actual tolerances I come up with and see if it's good enough. Next step is to uh, to find how these both gears can be synced together so that uh, the counterbalancer will move in um, in a proper way according to the crankshaft itself. So in order to do that I need to find a top dead center for a, a crankshaft and I'm using here not uh, so super accurate method but still uh, it works i think enough uh, tolerance for this uh, particular task so i'm uh, using a dial gauge here to uh, to find where the crank is at its uh, top uh, and then i'm um, putting uh, some pressure here through the crank so it uh, will not move during the proce process and uh, after that I will uh, try to do uh, the same thing with the counterbalancer and uh, as the final result I will uh, drill these holes and uh, make the threads in, uh, in the hub. So uh, that's about it. When I designed the counterbalancer 
I uh, chose uh, M14 times one and a half millimeter for this thread over here. Not quite uh, realizing that it needed actually 130, 200, 150 newton meters in uh, torque. So, and that's uh, quite a lot. That's uh, definitely more than I would like to uh, put on um, on the gear itself, particularly when it's uh, organic, backlit. So, um, in order to make this uh, work, to be able to tighten it, I also needed to uh, manufacture uh, some kind of holding tool so I can uh, mount this on here with a small M6 and uh, then put um, uh, the torque wrench over like this. So, uh, well, it's not uh, just manufacturing a counterbalancer. It uh, requires a little bit of everything. Now the counterbalancer is in place and so is the new uh, sprocket here on the crankshaft that drives the counterbalancer. And both are torqued to uh, the appropriate levels and um, the cam cams are timed and um, well it's time to uh, try to adapt it to the frame, see how that goes. Thank you. 